Hello, can you hear me and can you see me? Okay, can you hear me and can you see me? Just give me that. Good evening. Hello, Zoya. Good evening, Pramod. Okay, you can. Okay, fine. So, I hope studies are amazing. Yes. Okay, so good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. After this, after today's session, I just can say one thing. I'm definitely going to miss you guys a lot. So much of zeal and uh, everything. And I just hope you write the best of the paper tomorrow. So today I'm going to discuss... Uh, Indian Contract Act with you all. Good evening, good evening. So, uh -huh. so today as I told you, we, we are going to discuss Indian Contract Act. So, let's start with it without typo, typo. That's a typo. Again, the second time she wrote, she again made the same mistake. Don't make such mistakes in the exam, please. We cannot afford to do that. So, uh, as I was telling you, we are going to discuss today without wasting our time and good, good, good evening all of you, good evening all of you. And <clears throat> just one thing before I start the session, for all of you who are feeling just a little bit of demotivation or, you know, scared, just chill, calm and, you know, be calm, chill. Uh, it's very, very normal to have those, you know, thoughts. You are going to write an amazing paper. I trust that. I trust that. So, all the, you know, doubts outside the window now. Good evening, good evening, good evening, all of you. So, um, without wasting our time, let's start with it. And uh, obviously, because it's YouTube, so your answers would be a little delayed. Uh, whenever I'm reading the question, you also try to answer and see your answers are matching or not. Okay? They should. I mean, that's a very wrong thing of me to say. They should match, obviously. Uh, <clears throat> Ramaswamy proposed to sell his house to Ramanathan. Ramanathan sent his acceptance by post. Next day, Ramanathan sends a telegram withdrawing his acceptance. Okay, Vaibhav, I'll just check it later. Okay? Uh, Ramanathan sends a telegram withdrawing his acceptance. Examine the validity of the acceptance according to the Indian Contract Act. Uh, was received by Ramaswamy before the letter of if letter of revocation. Whatever he receives first is obviously valid. Since he has received letter of revocation first, can I say the revocation is valid? Yes. The telegram of revocation and letter of acceptance both reach together. So, there are two things here. Actually, whichever he reads first is more logically correct, but ICI has taken a different stand on that. They say, obviously, when both of them reach together, again, revocation is absolute. So, revocation will be valid. Radha invited her 10 close friends to celebrate her 25th birthday party on 1st Jan 23 at 7.30 p.m. at a well-known hi-fi restaurant at Tonk Road, Jaipur. All, all invited friends accepted the invitation and promised to attend the said party. On request of the hotel, uh, hotel manager, Radha deposited 5,000 as non-refundable security for the said party. On the scheduled date and time, three amongst the 10 friend, invited friends did not turn up for the birthday party and did not convey any prior communication to her. Radha, enraged uh, with the behavior of the three friends, wanted to sue them for loss incurred in the said party. Advise, would your answer, advise as per, she cannot. The reason being, the reason being that since it's just a birthday party invitation, it's a social agreement. And a social agreement is not a contract and not enforceable by law. Advice, um, what would your answer differ if the said party had been a contributory 2023 New Year's celebration party? If it is a contributory party means we all are going to pool in our money 
and we are going to make a celebration then obviously if you have promised to pool in your money it is a legal contract and in that case obviously the contract becomes enforceable by law because because you said we will pay we have arranged this party right all contracts are agreements but all agreements are not contracts is it true yes agreements is a it's a very huge term it includes both uh, when we say when we say agreement it includes a social agreement also it includes a domestic agreement also and it includes a legal agreement also when the agreement is legal it is a contract so every agreement which is legal is a contract so every contract is obviously a legal agreement X agrees to pay Y one lakh if Y kills Z. To pay Y, X borrows one lakh. So X makes a contract with Y to kill Z, and to pay this, he borrows the money money from W, who is also aware of the purpose of the loan. Y kills Z, but X refuses. So this is what illegal, and this is what collateral to illegal. When the main contract is illegal, the collateral is also tainted with illegality and hence void. Y kills Z, but X refuses to pay. X also, um, X also to repay. Acha, X also refuses to repay the loan to W. Examine the validity. X and Y, it is illegal. X and W, it is void. Now moving on to the next one. Distinguish between void and voidable contract. A void contract is one which is not enforceable by law. Voidable is one which is enforceable at the option of the aggrieved party. so that means void cannot be ratified whereas voidable can be ratified then in case of void void is always void ab initio but voidable is not void ab initio in void i cannot claim damages but in voidable i can also claim the damages mr joy owns two flats in a building he wanted to sell flat number 101 to mr roy mr joy offered to sell his flat to mr roy but mr roy thought that mr joy wanted to sell flat 102 and said yes for the agreement he offered to sell his flat whereas he thought this now considering the provisions obviously it is what lack of consensus ad idem and since this lack of it's also bilateral mistake of identity of subject matter and hence the contract is what void define offer explain the essentials of a valid offer so what is an offer uh, and a, a, a willingness to do or not to do something with the view of obtaining the other person's consent to such act or abstinence uh, and what are the rules of valid offer it must be definite clear and not vague it must be made with an intention to create a legal relationship then it must be uh, it must be communicated it may be expressed or implied cannot be accepted in ignorance of the offer may be conditional but cannot contain a terms the non compliance of which would amount to acceptance and statement of intention statement of price and invitation to offer is not an offer a, a shopkeeper displayed a pair of dress acha by the way my voice i hope that's fine no huh? a shopkeeper displayed a pair of dress in the showroom and a price tag of 2000 was attached to the dress miss lovely looked at the tag and rushed to the cash counter then she asked the shopkeeper to receive the payment and pack up the dress The shopkeeper refused to hand over the dress to Miss Lovely in consideration of the price stated in the price tag attached to the dress. Well, Miss Lovely, she will have no remedies at all because it's just a price tag, and price tag is an invitation to offer. And whenever it is an invitation to offer, it is obviously not an offer. And when it is not an offer, the other person is not bound. When you say I want to buy it, you are making the offer, and obviously it's the other person's choice whether to accept it or not. Shambhu Dayal started a self service system in India a system in a shop sorry Shrimati Prakash entered the shop took a basket and after taking articles of her choice into the basket reached the cashier for payment the cashier refuses to accept it's a self service shop and if you remember pharmaceutical society of great britain versus cash booth chemist it's okay if you don't remember the case names don't panic it is just an invitation to offer when i select the goods and approach the cashier's desk i am making the offer and when he makes the bill he has accepted it now the cashier refuses well obviously no one will refuse but if he refuses he is not wrong can shambhulal come com be, uh, be compelled to sell the said articles obviously no 
Mr. Asim is a learned advocate. His car was stolen from his house. He gave an advertisement in newspaper that he will give the reward of 10,000 who will give the information about his car. Mr. Vikram reads the advertisement and on making some efforts, get got the stolen car and informed Mr. As Asim. First of all, he gave a newspaper ad. Generally, newspaper ads are invitation to offer, but if there is a prize money, then it is an offer. Mr. Asim found his car but denied giving reward of 10,000 to Mr. Vikram with the words, an advertisement in newspaper is just an invitation to make an offer and not an offer. Basically, Mr. Asim thought, uh, it will be there, it will be there on the channel only. This video will be there on the channel only, okay? So, he basically thought that I will make him a fool. He did not know that Mr. Vikram was also a CA student, correct? So, hence, he is not liable to make the reward. State with reasons whether Mr. Vikram, yes, absolutely, he can claim the reward, right? Rahul goes to a supermarket to buy a washing machine. Uh, he selects a branded washing machine having a price tag. Price tag is an invitation to offer. Of 15,000 after a discount. Discount is again an invitation to offer. Rahul reaches at the cash counter for making the payment. But the cashier says, sorry sir, the discount was up to yesterday. There is no discount from today. Hence, you have to pay 18,000. Rahul got angry and insists for 50,000. State with reasons whether... Rahul can enforce the cashier to sell. No, since it's an invitation to offer, I'm not bound to sell at the price that you have said. Mr. Pratham applied for a job as a principal of a school. The school management decided to appoint him. One member of the school management committee, so basically in case of special or specific offer, the offer can be accepted only by the person to whom the offer is made. Mr. Pr here, the it was made to the school committee, school management. Mr. Pratham that he was appointed, but official communication was not given from the school. Since the official communication was not given, it's not a communication from the school. It's not a valid communication. Later, the management of the school decided to appoint someone else as the principal. Mr. Pratham filed a suit against the school for cancellation of his appointment and claimed damages. Can he claim? No. Since acceptance was never communicated, Ma'am, the person communicated. It was a private communication. And private communication is not a valid communication. Since the acceptance was never communicated, it's not valid. A sends an offer to B to sell his second-hand car for 1,40,000 with a condition that if B does not reply within a week, with a condition that if B does not reply within a week, he shall treat the offer as accepted. You cannot force your offer on me. Silence is not acceptance. If I want to accept, I will accept by my words or actions. Is A correct in his proposition? Is A correct in his proposition? No, an offer cannot contain any term, the non-compliance of which would amount to acceptance. Correct, Nikita. Is A, uh, what will be the position? Uh, Yashika, just read the names because in case they ask you any such question, you at least should remember. What shall be the position if B communicates his acceptance after one week? No, it's the offer is only not valid. So, obviously not a valid acceptance because the offer is only not valid. Comment on the must be absolute and unqualified. Yes, acceptance cannot be conditional. If it is conditional, it's a counter offer. It's not an acceptance only. So, it cannot be conditional. Acceptance must be in the prescribed mode. If nothing is specified, it can be in any mode. But if the mode has been specified, acceptance only has to be in the specified mode and in no other mode. If it is not in the specified mode, it's not valid. But if it is not in the specified mode, but the other person accepts it, then it's a valid contract. Define the term, term acceptance. Acceptance when the person to whom the offer is made signifies his consent. Thereto, he said to have accepted the offer. Explain the legal rules regarding a valid acceptance must be absolute and unqualified, uh, must be communicated. Silence is not acceptance, but acceptance can be made by conduct. Acceptance must be in the mode prescribed and it must be within the time specified and if nothing is specified, within a reasonable time. Well, if you want to, in some cases, you know, you may feel that you, will, you would prefer writing an example, you can definitely write it. In some cases, it's good also. What are the different modes of revocation of offer? Counter offer, cross offer, lapse of time, uh, then offer not accepted in the prescribed mode, 
uh, if there are any conditions and those conditions have not been fulfilled uh, death or insanity subsequent impossibility uh, subsequent illegality i'm so sorry yes by notice of revocation also correct mr b makes a proposal i swear i mean i, the, I, I think this was the second question in the class that we had done in the writing practice mr b makes a proposal to mr s to by post to sell his house for 10 lakh and posted the letter on 10th april and the letter reaches s on the 12th of april he reads since this line is given communication of accept offer will take place on 13th april mr s sends his letter of acceptance on 16th april and the letter reaches b on 20th april on 17th april s changes his mind and sends a telegram withdrawing his acceptance and this telegram reaches on the 19th of april on which date the offer is complete 13th discuss the validity of the acceptance since acceptance revocation reaches before acceptance is obviously not valid yeah what would be the validity of acceptance if letter of revocation and letter of acceptance reach together then obviously revocation is valid acceptance is not valid right revocation is valid acceptance is not valid define consideration state the characteristics of a valid consideration when at the desire of the promiser the promisee or any other person had done or abstained from doing does or abstains from doing or will do or abstain from doing then each act or abstinence form consideration for each other consideration must move at the desire of the promiser consideration may move from the promisee or any other person consideration may be past present or future consideration may be executed or executory consideration must be something which a promiser is not already bound to do consideration need not be adequate and consideration must not be unlawful illegal or against public policy if it is a void agreement first of all the agreement is already made so there is nothing like cancellation or revocation of offer there is already an agreement offer acceptance everything is there no correct pramiti <clears throat> to form a valid contract consideration must be no consideration must be present however need not be that means what give and take should be there however there is no rule saying give and take should be equal mr balwant an old man by a registered gift deed granted certain land property to miss reema his daughter by terms of the deed it was stipulated that an annuity of 20000 should be paid every year to mr sawant who was the brother of mr balwant on the same day miss reena made a promise to mr sawant she promised to pay mr sawant and executed and executed in his favor an agreement to give effect to the stipulation miss reema failed to pay the stipulated sum in in an uh, action against her by mr samant she contended that since mr samant had not furnished any consideration he was he has no right of action explain uh, the name the name of the case chinaya versus ramaya same thing consideration may move from the promisee or any other person consideration may move from the promisee or any other person here even though the uh, i mean mr saman is saman sorry is not giving anything to miss reema mr balwant has already given her the land to give her this annuity so even though mr saman has not given anything mr balwant has paid consideration for this contract and and since consideration can move from a third party even though mr saman has not paid any consideration he still has a right of action against miss reema a stranger to a contract cannot sue however in some cases even a stranger so the rule is privity of contract only the parties to the contract can sue and be sued third party cannot sue lekin law mein kya hota hai locha right law mein kya hota hai please do say that word with me because this is the last time that we are going to say this word right yeah so um, in case of assignment in case of uh, family or marriage settlement in case of uh, um what do you say trust or beneficiary in case of contracts or by the principal in case of estoppel or acknowledgement of liability and in case of covenants running with the land yes yes absolutely locha is going strong mr sohan lal and this answer also so this answer taught us one thing whenever you have a question which is an exception to a general rule try to quote the general rule first and then talk about the locha okay 
no aditya because it's an invitation to offer price tags are invitation to offer and in case of an invitation to offer i'm not bound to sell mr sohan lal sold 10 acres of agricultural land to mr mohan lal on 25 september for 25 lakhs so this question does not require the date so in the exam if you don't write too much of dates in the second paragraph it's absolutely okay the property papers mentioned a condition among other details that whosoever purchases the land is free to use 9 acres but the remaining 1 acre has to be allowed to be used by mr chote lal son of the seller for carrying on yes for carrying out farming activities so the contract is between mr mohan lal and mr sohan lal that he is selling his 10 acres of land but one acre will be used by his son chote lal on 12th october mr sohan lal died leaving his son and wife he died but his life was in his wife on 15th october purchaser started construction of an auditorium on the whole 10 acres of land and denied any land to the son now chote lal wants to file obviously can he file yes even though a third party cannot sue the contract but he being the beneficiary of that agreement can sue the other person covenant running with the land correct explain the following um, first one agreement made of out of love and affection yes yes absolutely yes nikita that's a very important thing all the guys here should understand that agreements made out of love and affection are valid agreements if they are made out of love and affection between parties who stand in a real relation near relation written and registered promise to pay a time bar debt cannot be enforced promise to pay a time bar debt can be enforced if it is a written promise if it is an oral promise it cannot be enforced no consideration no contract common uh, the general rule is a contract without consideration is void however law mein kya hota hai locha so there are seven cases where contract is valid even without consideration natural love and affection compensation uh, compensation for past voluntary service time bar debt agency uh, then uh, bailment and uh, completed gifts and donations and charities father promised to pay his son his son a sum of rupee 1 lakh i hope i i bless you all that your dad also make such promises to you if his son passed the examination in the first attempt the son passed the examination in the first attempt but the father failed to pay the amount promised son files a suit for recovery of the amount state can he file a case first of all if his son passed ca so he is not getting anything in return so first there is a lack of consideration since it's a promise between yes you can absolutely write it vishwas but make sure that if there are any keywords right so if they say voidable don't write it's not valid voidable is a preferable thing there so just make sure of the keywords that's it so um, lack of consideration and because it was not written and registered so there is a lack of legal relationship it's just a domestic relationship between the husband uh, sorry between the father and son mr ramesh promised yes 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 mr ramesh promised to pay 50000 to his wife mrs lali so that she can spend the sum on her 30th birthday mrs lali insisted her husband to make a written agreement she was a smart lady aditya um consideration and uh, donations and charities are enforceable provided on the basis of your promise the other person has incurred any liability so the question will say that on the basis of his promise he incurred liability that will be given in the question so that you don't have to worry but it is only enforceable to the extent of the promise so if you spend something more i'm not liable then a uh, written agreement and the agreement was registered under the law Mrs Ramesh failed to pay the specified amount to his wife and one more thing in this charities and donation sorry uh, if the amount spent is less you will not get the whole amount so basically the law says that the amount recoverable will be the amount of liabilities incurred yes was and it was registered she was a smart lady got it written and registered husband did not pay can she file a case against the husband yes because natural love and affection and please if the question has points it can be a part of the first paragraph please do write the answer in points in that case which one no this is not completed gifts completed gifts you make a promise that i am going to gift you right oh acha no 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 this is not completed gifts this is not given as a gift it's not given as a gift if it was given as a gift then anyway and because see here they have clearly given written and registered is given no already so basically they are talking about that point
response are breach provisions which provisions yeah yeah love and affection mr ramlal was a big businessman of sati pune having two sons and one married daughter he decided to gift his own one one house to his daughter for this purpose for this purpose he called his lawyer he has called his lawyer as at his house and made a written agreement for such gift now because gift word is given doesn't mean it's a gift generally in gift what happens i will tell you i'm going to give you this gift the lawyer advised him to get the transfer document properly registered they are talking about registration and everything when they both were going for registration they met with an accident and both of them died later his daughter found the document and claimed the house can she claim no because it was never registered so aditya you promised your school that you will give them a donation of 11000 and after your promise your school installed this question was done in the class also and they installed an aqua guard of uh, 8000 can they recover 8000 from you whether the statement is correct or incorrect minor is liable to pay for the necessary supplied to him a minor is never personally liable for the necessary supplied to him the liability is against the minor's property mr shekhar wants to sell his car for this purpose he appoints mr nadan a minor as an agent and he instructs mr nadan to sell the car at 1 lakh rupees nadan ignores the instruction and sells the car to mr masoom sorry this is nadan here sorry and sells the car to mr masoom for 80000 first of all masoom is as masoom as his name so he doesn't know that the car was supposed to be sold for sold for sorry so he did not know uh, that uh, i mean the car was supposed to be sold for sold for sell what am i saying sold for 1 lakh so obviously not his fault so will he get the ownership yes now generally if it was not a minor i would have claimed the damages from the agent but since n is a minor the agent who is a minor i cannot even claim the money the damages from uh, uh, n so mr shekhar can recover the loss from mr nadan no if nadan was a major we could but not here mr shekhar can recover his car from mr masoom can mr shekhar recover his car from mr masoom no the sale is absolutely valid so he cannot recover yes minor can be an agent but not a principal um generally aditya i don't think charities and donations time can be of this sense no so for that he has to pay yes rahul a minor falsely representing you know what i have done so many live sessions with you all before throughout the you know the exam preparation time first time i'm seeing you guys so energetic and you know attending Rahul a minor falsely representing his age enters into an agreement with a major with a shopkeeper for a loan amount for purchasing a laptop he gave his expensive watch as a security and took a loan of 40000 he was very happy to get 40000 and quickly went to the market and purchased the laptop worth 30000 he happily spent the rest of the amount with his friends on a pleasure trip later on rahul realized that his watch was an expensive watch and he should not have given it like this to the shopkeeper So he went back to the shop here and asked for the watch back. Wow! First he says I am a major and makes a contract. Then he goes and cancels the contract. When a minor fraudulently enters into a contract with an intention to cheat, even if he proves his minority, he will have to compensate. Also, he refused to repay the loan amount. The shopkeeper disagrees to this and files a case. Uh, files a case. So a case was filed. So whenever a case is filed, minor can always plead minority. But if his intention intention was to cheat, he will have to compensate. so here can he get his watch back yes but he has to pay this 40000 now nothing is left of the 40000 but he got a laptop worth 30000 this he has to give to the shopkeeper as far as the 10000 is concerned we cannot do anything because he is a minor see about this moe moe if you remember yesterday also in my video i told you after as per the provisions your mind should not go moe moe रीम्बर्समेंट नहीं बोल सकते कॉम्पनसेशन या वट एवर 
though a minor is not competent to contract nothing in the contract prevents him from making the other party bound to the minor so this is basically a minor uh, a minor's agreement is void ab initio but a minor can always be a beneficiary Shrishti, a minor falsely representing her age, enters into an agreement with an authorized laptop dealer, Mr. Gupta, owner of SP Laptops, for purchase of laptop on credit amounting sixty thousand, for purchasing a laptop on first August. She promised to pay back the outstanding amount with interest at the rate sixteen percent per annum by thirty first July two thousand twenty two. She told him that in case she won't be able to uh, pay the outstanding amount, her father, Mr. Ram, will pay back on her behalf. After one year. When Shristi was asked to pay the outstanding amount with interest, she refused to pay the amount and told the owner that she is a minor and now he can't recover a single penny. So this this case never went to the court. When it goes to the court, we talk about proving minority, but it never goes to the court here. She will be an adult. Uh, she is a and he cannot recover a single penny. She will be an adult on first January totally. Correct. Only after that the agreement can be ratified. Explain. the following by filing can he recover the money by filing a case no why because an agreement with a minor is void ab initio by filing a case against mr ram father of shrishti for recovery of the outstanding amount no parent is liable only when they have given an authority by filing a case against shrishti a minor for recovery of outstanding amount after she attains majority no a minor's act cannot be ratified yeah Chotu, 17 year, has purchased a mobile of 25,000 for his online classes. From mobile sales credit, can we say it's on? Uh, it's for necessaries. Yes. On the due date, he did not make the payment of mobile. Mobile sales center sued Chotu and his parents for the price of the mobile. Chotu has 15,000 as his cash balance, but his father has enough money to pay the price of the mobile. Who will be liable? He will not be liable. Why will the father be liable? Minor's parent are liable only when they give authority for it. He has fifteen thousand, which will be paid for this because this is necessaries. Otherwise, this wouldn't also be liability. Ten thousand, no liability. Ayush, who is a minor, purchased ten fancy coats for the wedding ceremony of his sister on credit from Messrs. Surjewala and Sons. The cost of all the coats was eighty thousand. Wow. And ten fancy coats. What? He will only wear coats only. If not even a single coat was a necessity, cannot recover the money. Not a necessity. Not. necessity ayush has assets of worth 1 lakh Ms. messrs surjewala and son file a suit against ayush for recovery of 80000 cannot recover is he liable to pay no yes because frolic whoever you are it is given he purchased it for his online class so yes x a minor was studying in mcom in college On first July two thousand nineteen, he is in exams. If you get such questions, don't start using your brains. How can he be in M com? That's not your concern. They are saying answer it. Cut up. On first July two thousand nineteen, he took he took a loan of ten thousand from B for payment of his college fees and to purchase books and agreed to repay by thirty first December. X possesses assets worth nine lakh. This one lakh was taken for college fees. So is it a necessary? Yes. On the due date, X fails to pay back the loan to B. B now wants to recover the loan from X out of his assets. Can he recover? Yes, he can recover from the assets of X because necessaries. A student was induced by his teacher to sell his brand new car to the latter at less than the purchase price to secure more marks in the examination. Accordingly, the car was sold under influence. Can the student sue the teacher? Yes, on what grounds? Under influence. Mr A the employer induces his employee Mr B to sell his one room flat to him at less than the market value to secure promotion can we say the same thing under influence discuss the essentials of under influence so there should be a relationship between the parties the parties must be in a position to dominate the will of another and the terms must be unreasonable right and the contract is made on terms which is unreasonable explain the term coercion and what is the effect on the validity of the contract coercion is what when one party induces the other to enter into a contract by an act which is a crime under the indian penal code or the unlawful detaining of the property of another what is the result the contract is voidable 
when is a person deemed to be in a position to dominate the will of another when there is a or what you say when there is a real or apparent relationship there is a fiduciary relationship there is a mental distress or the terms of the contract are unreasonable or unconscionable define fraud whether mere silence will amount to fraud so basically what is fraud five categories are considered as fraud right uh, the assertion of the fact which one believes to be true but makes the other person believe it to be false then active concealment of fact contract entered without an intention to perform then uh, any act which is declared fraudulent by law or uh, any act uh, which is made uh, which is with an intention to deceive silence is not fraud silence is not fraud however there are two cases where silence is fraud when it is the duty of the person keeping silent to speak this happens in case of marriage agreements prospectus immovable property insurance and family agreements and the second one is in case when where silence equals to speech depending on the marks if it is for 2 marks don't if it is for 4 marks then obviously a little bit of content should be there so you can just put in there karan agreed to purchase wooden table for his study room from mr x table was in a good condition and was examined by karan before purchasing he found no defects that means he checked it carefully but there were no defects and paid 20000 later on it was found that one leg of the table is broken can we say this is fraud yes but ma'am karan checked no so he checked he found no defects that means the defect was hidden and mr x had pasted the wood and tried to hide the defects can he return the table back yes yes he can uh varun um, it's not necessary it's not necessary it's uh, con uh, contingent goods it can be future goods also that depends on the type of contract yes absolutely aditya i am here for you all any time today i am available yeah 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 p sell by auction can you recall the class ha huh? we studied in the class able to recall all of this things are huh? class P sells by an auction to Q a horse which P knows to be unsound, right? P sells by an auction to Q a horse which P knows is what unsound. P knows to be unsound. The horse appears to be sound, but P knows about the unsoundness of the horse. Is this contract valid? Silence is not fraud. If P says nothing about the unsoundness of the horse to Q, yes, because silence is not fraud. If P says nothing about it to Q, who is P's daughter, who has just come of age. Now see, in auction sale, no, I'm not required to tell you anything. So if the goods have any defect, it's there in front of you. You examine, you check, you like, you purchase. I don't have to say anything. But when it is Q, right? When it is the uh, other person's daughter, okay. So in case of family agreements, it's my duty to explain, or it's my duty to, uh, you know, to speak out about the. condition if i don't then it is fraud so uh, is this contract valid no here it is what it is voidable okay gone if q says to p if you do not deny it i shall assume that the horse is sound p says nothing so uh, in this case uh, what happens is in the uh, i repeat again sorry in this case where silence equals to speech then silence is what silence is fraud i don't know my pen is gone i guess uh frolic as far as this point is concerned that you are saying if he would have checked it carefully he would have come to know the i mean whatever discrepancies are there this point is actually applicable only when the question says there was means to discover otherwise to i can say in everything that there were means to discover i can i will know whether there are means to discover or not only when my question says that since question does not say anything you cannot put that point here Sohan induced Suraj to buy his motorcycle, uh, saying that it was in a very good condition. After taking the motorcycle, what happened to my pen? I don't know. Wait. Sohan induced Suraj to buy his motorcycle, saying that it was in a very good condition. After taking the motorcycle, Suraj complained that there were many defects in the motorcycle. Sohan proposed to get it repaired and promised to 
so basically here there were many defects that means can i say this is fraud yes why because he said that the motorcycle is in a good condition but it was not so this is fraud sohan proposed to get it repaired and promised to pay 40% of the cost of repairs after a few days the motorcycle did not work at all now suraj wants to resume the contract can he resume the contract first of all here we don't know he accepted the repairs or not but when they say after a few days the motorcycle did not work at all this itself goes to show that he must have accepted it and avoidable contract once ratified cannot be cancelled so can he claim anything oh yes frolic i think your class really had seen a very bad side of my pen also right so even the pen is recalling the class correct correct absolutely kapil went to a departmental store to purchase a steel pan he as always remember there is this one sentence which will give you the answer okay so in that example q says to p if you don't tell anything i will believe that the horse is sound aditya you only tell me uh, q says to p if you don't tell me anything i will assume that the horse is sound and p does not say anything so in that case what should q assume okay <laughs> okay they um, you know you you guys are making me walk down the memory lane i'm feeling very nostalgic aditya tell me if if you tell me ma'am if you don't say anything i will assume that llp question is not important i don't say anything what will you assume because you will assume it's not important because my silence equals to my speech so when silence equals to speech then silence is what fraud he asked the salesman about the area in the departmental store where steel pans are kept the salesman indicated him the area with instructions that steel pans along with steel pans other metal pans are also kept kapil wrongfully picked an aluminium pan in place of steel pan see the shopkeeper already told him there are other metal pans also he picked up an aluminium pan, uh, pan. the salesman watched but said nothing to kapil kapil reached his house and found the pan was not a steel pan but actually an aluminium pan can he return the goods back no silence is not fraud you i if after picking up he goes and asks is this steel pan and he doesn't say anything then it would have been fraud but he already told him that along with steel pans there are other pans also so this is not fraud aditya i hope you understood Mr X a businessman has been uh, fighting a long drawn litigation with Mr Y an industrialist to support his legal campaign he enlisted the services of Mr C a judicial officer stating that the amount of 10 lakh would be paid to him if he does not take up the brief of Mr Y brief means the case Mr C agrees but at the end of the litigation Mr X refuses to pay obviously it's against law the contract is made the object is unlawful and hence it is what it is void one of the essentials is that the agreement must not be unlawful are what was the name of the girl abia was it abia she had asked me this doubt also abia had messaged in the group was it was it abia who had messaged if abia you are there i hope you understood the question if not afra i don't remember afra it was then someone had messaged me in the group to explain this line and define misrepresentation and fraud uh, fraud is basically i gave you those five i'm not going again again into that uh, basically misrepresentation is what when you state something uh, which is wrong but you believe that it is right without without an intention to deceive you are making a mistake of the fact difference fraud is intentional and misrepresentation is in, unintentional so um, uh, in fraud the party knows about the truth in misrepresentation the party is unaware of the truth fraud is made with an intention to deceive in mis misrepresentation is without an intention to deceive and in fraud you can claim damages but in misrepresentation you cannot claim damages we already discussed this now we'll not go into this Chandan was suffering from some disease and was in great pain. He went to Dr. Junjunwala, whose con consultation fees was three hundred. The doctor agreed to treat him, but on the condition that Chandan has to sign a promissory note of five thousand payable to doctor. Chandan signed the promissory note and gave it to the doctor. On recovering from the disease, Chandan refused to honor the promissory note. State with reasons. This is 
what undue influence i'll take care of you uh if you remember you can write if you don't remember it's okay this is what undue influence right mr y uh, so can you recover the money on the promissory note no in undue influence the contract is voidable here it is voidable at the option of the aggrieved party here uh here chandan is um, the aggrieved party so obviously cannot recover okay mr y is a devotee and wants to donate an elephant to the temple and wants to donate an elephant to the temple as a core part of a ritual acha uh, one more thing i'll forget that is what i'm telling you this in between uh, so some people someone just messaged me also some people might be thinking after the exam accounts exam if you have friends also who are in this uh, please just go and tell them this thing okay so many of you would be thinking that i have not studied yeah you know uh, maybe my accounts exams are not good enough so i shouldn't sit and write since you already uh, you know already sat for the exam you've already sat for the accounts exam please go through the whole thing don't stop now you never know maybe the paper comes out in such a way that you are able to answer you remember the task whatever at this point of time don't stop finish your papers finish through the last paper please uh so mr y is a devotee and wants an elephant to the temple as a core sorry and wants to donate an elephant to the temple as a core part see if you miss out word you you get confused so please read it very thoroughly as a core part of ritual worship he contract he contacted mr x who wanted to sell his elephant mr x contacted with y to sell his elephant for 20 lakh both were unaware both were unaware that the elephant was dead a day before the agreement so here the goods are destroyed even before the agreement is made referring to the provision explain whether it is void voidable or valid can i call it as a bilateral mistake of fact yes and in case of bilateral mistake of fact the contract is what the contract is void yes yes absolutely uh the next one mr samant owned a motor car he approached mr chotu and offered to sell his motor car for 3 lakh mr samant told uh, mr chotu that the motor car is running at the rate of 30 km per liter of petrol now see someone asked me i think frolic was it you if it was if not whoever it was someone had asked me ma'am if i could use my diligence i would have come to know the facts right someone just asked me ma'am if i would have used my diligence i would have come to know the facts every question you can actually say if i would have used my diligence but what did i tell you only if the question says that then you can say that so here see what is given both the fuel meter and the speed meter of the car were working perfectly so this line tells you that if mr chotu wanted to know the fact he could have discovered the fact mr chotu agreed with the proposal of mr saman then took delivery of the car by paying 3 lakh to mr saman after 10 days mr chotu came back with the car and stated that the claim made by mr saman regarding fuel efficiency was not correct and therefore there was a case of misrepresentation and see we don't know it's fraud or misrepresentation but here they have specifically given it's a case of misrepresentation don't sit and argue no it is fraud it is fraud you just have to write about misrepresentation referring to can mr chotu resign the contract no when one party uses fraud or misrepresentation but the other party if he would have used his diligence would have come to know the facts the contract is valid x agreed to become an assistant for 2 years to y so frolic you now got it right uh, to y who was practicing ca uh, at jodhpur it was also agreed that during the term of agreement now if they had not given this 2 years then this whole thing would the answer could have been different during the term of agreement x will not practice as a ca on his own account within 20 kilometers of the office of y at jodhpur at the end of one year x left the assistantship of y and started practice on his own account can he stop him yes he can stop him why because the agreement was for 2 years acha i'll just go into the question whoever has sent let's just check that out okay just a second which one is more correct as per the provisions of the indian contract act of for me you have written the same thing no is the same thing
both are same verb which is absolutely okay anyway an agreement the meaning of which is uncertain is void an agreement if the terms of an agreement are uncertain it is void however if there are means to discover the term then obviously the contract is valid a enters into contract with b that he sells his house for 10 lakh to b further they both signed an agreement that if b uses the house for gambling purpose then b shall pay 50000 for it b agreed to this however after a year of sale b started gambling in that house can a claim no when a contract has two parts one legal and other le illegal and both the parts are separable legal is valid illegal is what void correct state with reasons whether the following are valid or void a clause in an agreement provided that no action should be brought any agreement in restraint of legal proceedings is what void where two courts have jurisdiction to try a suit an agreement between the parties that the suit should be filed in one of those and not in the other valid see whenever i talk about legal proceedings there are two things here one is prohibition and one is restriction correct prohibition is not valid restriction is valid i am not saying you cannot go to the court to which one frolic i am not saying you cannot go to the court i am saying you can only go to one specific court and not to the other courts x offers to sell his maruti car to y y believes that x only has x has only wagon or car but agrees to buy it since there is no consensus at edam bilateral mistake it's void X a physician and surgeon employs Y as an assistant on a salary of seventy five thousand per month for a term of two years, and Y agrees not to practice as a sur surgeon and physician during these two years. Absolutely valid. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, if agreement and restraint of trade, an agreement and restraint of trade, right? An agreement and restraint of trade. If it is reasonable, it is valid. Rohan is running a grocery store in Delhi. He sells his grocery business, including the goodwill worth one lakh, to Rohit for a sum of five lakh. After the sale of goodwill, Rohit made an agreement. Guys, we are we are half done with this scanner. The goodwill worth uh, for five lakh. After the sale of goodwill, Rohit made an agreement with Rohan. As per the provision, uh, as per this agreement, Rohan is not to open another grocery store in the whole of India. This is unreasonable. If it was in Delhi, understood. Whole of India, unreasonable. Rohan opens another store. Can he stop him? No, because the agreement is not valid. Mr. S, aged fifty years, fifty-eight years, was employed in a government department. He was going to retire after two years. Mr. D made a proposal to Mr. S to apply for voluntary retirement from his post so that Mr. D can be appointed in his place. Mr. D. Offered a sum of ten lakhs as consideration to Mr. S in order to induce him to retire. Can I say this is sale of public offices? Yes. Mr. S refused at first, at the first instance. But when he evaluated the amount offered as consideration, is just double of his cumulative remuneration to be received during the tenure of two years of employment. He agreed to receive the consideration and accepted the above agreement to receive money to retire from his office. Whether the above agreement is valid. Is it valid? No agreement for the sale of public offices is what? <clears throat> agreement for the sale of public offices is void. What did I write? Yo, it's void. I'm so sorry. It is void. What is wagering agreement? An agreement to give money or money's worth on the happening or non-happening of a future uncertain event. Describe, uh, you know, the what do you say? The wagering transactions. So, uh, Yashika, this is the reason it is better you, you know, which one becomes valid if ratified frolic? That this is the reason it is better if you actually go through. What is wagering? What is look? What what looks like a wagering agreement? Oh wow! How did I do that? Just a second. So it should fund, um, then you know, commercial or market market transactions, games of skill, then a contract of insurance. They look like for retirement. No no no, it's void. Void void can never be ratified. Voidable can be ratified. 
Okay, difference between contract of insurance and wager. Please read this. I'm not going. Explain the type of contract in the following agreement. X promises to sell a scooter to Y for one lakh. However, the consent of X was be was taken at gunpoint. Coercion. Contract is voidable. A bought goods from B in 2015, but no payment was made till 2019. Unenforceable. Why? Time barred debt. G agrees to give tuitions to H, a pre-engineering student from the next month, and H is considerate. H in consideration promises to pay G five thousand per month. This is what executory, right? Because it is not yet performed. Hmm. The first one is uh, voidable. Yes. Mr. Ayush, the principal in modern public school, he needs. 2000 packets of biscuit to be distributed to students in his school on the occasion of republic day celebration for this purpose he contracted with yograj biscuit company mr ayush visited the workshop of yograj biscuit company and was very much satisfied with the quality of the biscuits he also found that a large number of varieties of biscuits are manufactured in the workshop he 1000 2000 he ordered 2000 packs of biscuits and gave the token money but did not specify the category of biscuit he needed the terms are vague and in a contract wherever whenever the terms are vague the contract is what void the contract is what void yes not enforceable by law mr s promises to mr m to paint a family picture for 20000 and assume us assures to complete his assignment by 15 march 2023 unfortunately mr s died in a road accident I swear, I told you know how many people are swaha in the law class, even in the questions also. He died since it's a personal skill contract. Cannot do anything. Yeah. Suppose Mr. So can Mr. M bind the legal representatives? No, it's personal skill. Suppose Mr. S had promised to deliver some photographs. Uh, but he dies. Will the rep? Yes. For this, because this is not personal skill. So, if it is not personal skill, yes. Sheena was a classical dancer. She entered into an agreement. Someone had messaged me, um, had called me, girl, if you are there. So, this is the question that you were asking for. Sheena was a classical dancer. She entered, she entered into an agreement with Sheetal Vidya Mandir for sixty dance performances. As per the contract, she was supposed to perform every weekend. And she'll be paid ten thousand per performance. Can we say because it is a live performance, time is of essence, correct? However, after a month, she was absent without informing due to her personal reasons. Answer: Whether the management has a right to terminate? Yes. Ah, uh, in case of time of essence, the contract is voidable. Yeah, frolic. We have killed so many people. Some effect should be there even on us, no? After killing so many people, after swaha to so many people, we cannot just survive like that, right? If the management of Sheetal Vidya Mandir informs Sheena about its continuance, can the management still resign the contract after a month on this ground subsequently? Can they still resign the contract if they have accepted it? A voidable contract once ratified cannot be cancelled. Can the can Sheetal Vidya Mandir claim damages that it has suffered because of the breach? In case of damages, if the contract is cancelled, you have a right to claim to uh, you have a right to claim damages. If the contract is not cancelled. Damages can be claimed only if it is mentioned. When a party to a contract has refused to perform or disabled himself from performing, the promisee may put an end to the contract. Yes, when one party is ready to perform but the other refuses to accept, the aggrieved party has a right to cancel the contract. And if he cancels, he can claim the damages. Mr. Nickel has decided to get interior work for his new office. For this purpose, he entered into a contract with Messrs. Sherry Fine Interiors. It was agreed that Ms. they will. Complete the work latest by 31st Jan. On 31st Jan, Mr. Nickel observed that only 20 to 30 percent work was done. He decided to cancel the contract. On cancellation of the contract, they filed a suit against Mr. Nickel for recovery of the cost which he has incurred. Mr. Nickel argued that Messrs. Sherry Fine Interiors did not complete the work within the time as per the contract, um, and the work done till then was will be of no use. Is he liable to pay? No. Because the work was never completed within time. When the time is mentioned, you should perform the time within. <laughs> yes, as they say, you know, so many, so many uh, sayings are there. Karma is a bitch. Boomerang. That is most appropriate, I guess. Karma is like boomerang. 
Mr. X was a disc jockey at a five-star hotel bar. As per the contract, he is supposed to perform every weekend. Uh, Mr. And can I say again, again, the time of essence. Mr. X will be paid fifteen hundred per day. However, after a month, Mr. X willfully absents himself from the performance. Does the hotel hotel have a right to end the contract? Yes. If the hotel sends out a mail to X uh, that they are interested to continue the contract and X accepts, can the hotel rescind the? They have sent a mail that they are interested to continue. Can the hotel rescind the contract? No, avoidable contract once ratified cannot be cancelled. Same answer as Sheena. In which of the cases can he claim damages? If he cancels, he can claim the damages. If he has accepted, damages can be claimed only if mentioned. The basic rule is that the promiser must perform exactly what he has promised to perform. Yes, obviously, where in a contract you have promised to perform, the promise should be whatever is promised. In case the promiser is unable to perform, I mean due to whatever, then in that case his legal representatives are liable to perform. A receives certain goods from B, promising to pay one lakh. Later, A expresses his inability to make the payment. So C, who is known to A, pays sixty thousand to B on behalf of A. However, A was not aware. Doesn't matter. It's a payment on behalf of A. Now B is intending to sue A for the amount. No. Can he sue him for forty thousand? Yes. Can he sue him for sixty thousand? No. Decide with reasons whether the following agreements are valid or void. Vijay agrees with Seni to sell his black horse for three lakh. Unknown to both the parties, the horse was dead at the time of agreement. It is void by lateral mistake of fact. Sarvesh sells the goodwill of his shop to Vikas for ten lakh and promises not to carry on this business forever anywhere in India. Void why? Because it is unreasonable. Mr. X agrees to write a book with a publisher after a few days. Mr. X dies in an accident. Void why? Personal skill and confidence. State. On which grounds can a contract be discharged under the provisions of the Indian Contract Act? So there are there are basically six ways. First, performance attempted and actual, lapse of time, operation of law, then mutual consent, novation, rescission, remission, and alteration. Right? Then uh, impossibility of performance existing at the time of contract and supervening impossibility. Then breach, actual or anticipatory. An anticipatory breach is a breach occurring before the time fixed for performance has arrived. Yes. When prior to the due date, one party comes to know the other will not perform, it's anticipatory breach. He has two options: he can cancel the contract on that very day or wait till the due date. If he cancels the contract on that day, he can claim the damages. If he waits till the due date, that on the due date, if the other party performs, he must accept it. If the other party does not perform, it is what? It is actual breach, and the contract can be cancelled, and obviously claim damages. Valid or void? Kamla promises Ramesh to lend five lakh in lieu of consideration that Ramesh gets Kamla's marriage dissolved, and he himself marries her. Void. Why? Because it is what? It is against public policy. Yeah. Marriage. What do you say? Uh, ma agreements. Ah. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. This is immoral. I'm so sorry. Sohan agrees with Mo Mohan to sell his black horse. Unknown to both the parties, the horse was dead at the time of agreement. Void on the grounds of bilateral mistake. Ram sells the goodwill of his shop to Sham for four lakh and promises not to carry this feature's debt. Void, unreasonable. There is a condition that they will not institute legal proceedings against each other without consent. Void. Why? Because agreement in restraint of trade is void. Rama Murthy, who is a citizen of India, enters into a contract with an alien friend. Alien friend, it's absolutely valid. You can make a contract with an alien friend. Right. Correct. Can we move forward? Yes. Answer the following. Mr. S and Mr. R made a contract wherein, wherein, uh, S delivered, agreed to deliver. Paper cup manufacture machine to R and to receive payment on delivery. On the delivery date, R didn't pay the agreed price. Decide whether Mr. S is bound to fulfill the promise. No. One party doesn't perform, the other is not bound to perform. Mr. Y gives loan, given loan to Mr. Gives loan to Mr. G of I had given loan to Mr. G of thirty lakh. Mr. G defaulted the loan on due date, and the debt becomes time barred. After the time bar debt, Mr. G agreed to settle the full amount to Y. Whether acceptance of time bar debt is enforceable by law? Okay, well, promise to pay a time bar debt is valid if it is what? If it is given in writing. 
so um, if it is given in writing then yes it's a valid contract a and b entered into a contract for the supply of some unique item alternate of which is not available in the market they refuse to supply the agreement uh, sorry the unique item what directions could be given by the court for breach of such contract specific performance when the goods have no substitute they can sue for specific performance what will be the rights of the parties mr x promised to bring back mr y to life again uh, mr y to life again it's void impossible to perform no rights uh, ms a agreed to sell 50 kg of apple to b the loaded truck left for delivery on 15th march but due to riots in between reached b on 19th march well uh, since it is what we say not in the control of both the parties it's obviously void you cannot claim anything an artist promised to paint uh, i mean you cannot claim anything from b for this for the fixed amount of remuneration but met with an accident and lost both his hands because of supervening impossibility void abhishek entered into a contract to import toys from china but due to disturbance in the relation of both the countries the import were banned void supervening impossibility point out whether valid or void in lieu of uh, this we have already done we have already done all of this a b c d are four partners they jointly promised to pay 6 lakh to f b and c have become insolvent b was unable to pay any amount and c could only pay 50000 a is compelled to pay the whole amount descent decide the extent to which a can recover the amount from d with reference to the provisions of indian contract act so 6 lakh if i divide into 4 how much will it be if it is 6 lakh and if i divide it into 4 i think it is 1 uh, lakh 50000 right 1 lakh 50000 is a and d's own share now b was unable to pay any amount that means they will bear the loss of d each of them that means the loss was 1 lakh 50000 they will bear 75000 each c could only pay 50000 c paid 50000 so 1 lakh is the loss so 50000 each of them will bear so he can recover 2 lakh 75000 correct x y and z jointly borrowed 50000 from a the whole amount was repaid to a by y decide in the light of the indian contract whether y can recover the contribution from x and y x and z sorry yes legal representatives of x are liable in case of death of x yes in case that becomes insolvent contribution from the assets yes up to the extent available then the next one ajay vijay and sanjay are partners of a software business and jointly promised to pay 6 lakh to kartik over a period of time uh, vijay becomes insolvent but his assets are sufficient to pay one fourth of his as, uh, debt sanjay is compelled ca- compelled to pay the whole amount decide whether sanjay is required to pay the whole amount to kartik yes we can compel anyone to pay the whole amount right Just give me a minute, guys. We'll just take a two minutes break. I'll just have water and come. Just give me two minutes, okay?
Okay, moving on to the next one. Mr. Sonumal, a wealthy, a wealthy individual provided a loan of 80,000 to Mr. Datumal on 26, 2019. The borrower, Mr. Datumal, asked for a further loan of 1,50,000. Mr. Sonumal agreed but provided the loan in parts at different at different dates. He provided 1 lakh on 28 and remaining 50,000 on 3 3. On 10 3, Mr. Datumal, while paying off part 75,000 to Mr. Sonumal, insisted that the lender should be adjust uh, 50,000 towards the loan taken and the balance against the loan of him. Can he specify? Yes. When the debtor makes the payment, he can specify and if the creditor accepts the payment, must set off that debt only. Mr. Sonumal objected to this arrangement and asked the borrower, yes, to adjust the uh, in order of date of borrowal. Can he do that? No. So whether the contention of Mr. Datumal is correct? Yes. What would be your answer in case the borrower does not insist? In that case, the creditor has a right to decide whichever he wants to set off. If both the parties do not specify, then whichever debt is first in order of time will be set off first, including a time bar debt. Mr. Murari owes a payment of three bills to Mr. Girdhari. Uh, this, this, this. Mr. Murari made the payment uh, of a, by a check of 9680. Since the amount is same, it is an implied appropriation. So if I have not told you, appropriation can be made by words or actions. I mean implied or express. Here it is implied. And the rest 15,000, he can use it first to pay off the time bar debt and the next for the rest of the money. His choice. Mr. Jude entered into an agreement with Mr. Such to purchase his motor car for 5 lakh within a period of 3 months. A security amount of 20,000 was also paid by Mr. Jude to Mr. Such. Since it's a security amount, it's non refundable. Mr. Such, in terms of the agreement, after completion of 3 months, Mr. Such tried to contact Jude to purchase the car. Uh, even after lapse of another 3 months period, Mr. Jude neither responded to Mr. Such nor to his phone calls. After a lapse of another period of 6 months, Mr. Jude contracted Mr. Such. Mr. Jude contracted Mr. Such and denied to purchase the motor car. He also demanded back the security amount of 20,000 from Mr. Such. Referring to the provisions of Indian Contract Act state whether Mr. Such is required to refund? No. Because security deposit is not supposed to be refunded. Examine the validity of the claim made by Mr. Jude. If the motor car would have been destroyed by an accident. If it is destroyed by an accident, it's not my fault. Then you have to refund the money back. Right? This guy is giving me a minute. I'll be back in a minute.
okay moving on to the next one uh con by whom a contract may be performed contract can be performed by the promisor himself or it can be performed by the uh, legal heirs uh, or by the agent but in case of death only by the promisor it can be performed by third parties also and in joint joint promisor is each of the joint promisor is jointly liable for their share and severally liable for the whole share i mean they will be performing jointly and severally mr singhania entered into a contract Mr. Singhania entered into a contract with Mr. Sonu to sing in his hotel for six weeks. So this is time of essence. On every Saturday and Sunday, Mr. Singhania promised to pay twenty thousand for every performance. Mr. Sonu performed for two weeks, but on the third week, his health condition was very bad, so he did not come to sing. Mr. Singhania terminated the contract. State, can he terminate the contract? Yes, time is of essence. In case he turns up in the fourth week and Mr. Singhania allows him to perform. he has accepted it and is valid now and a voidable contract once ratified cannot be cancelled what would be your answer in case mr sonu sends mr mika on his place in his place in the third week and mr singhania allows him to perform he has accepted it and the contract is now valid it's a personal scale vessel novation and alteration in novation the old contract is cancelled in alteration the and a new contract is made but in alteration no new contract is made uh in novation a third party can be involved involved in alteration third party cannot be involved right and obviously when we are making a new contract the terms of the contract can be changed but in old con in, in alter uh, in wait what did i say uh I, okay i was just talking about novation and rescission i'm so sorry novation and alteration novation old contract is cancelled alteration contract is not cancelled in alteration terms are changed in novation terms are not changed in alteration uh, there uh, there is no new contract but in novation there is a new contract explain any five circumstances under which contract need not be performed novation rescission remission alteration waiver contract is voidable and the contract is cancelled in all of these five cases contract need not be performed state the grounds on which a contract may be discharged and we have already discussed this case there are six ways we have already discussed almost nearing the end of it explain what is meant by supervening impossibility when when after the contract is made changes take place not in the hands of the parties but which makes the performance impossible making the contract void ex uh, aged 16 years borrowed a loan a loan of 50000 for his personal purpose few months later he had become a major and could not pay the amount the lender wants to file a suit minus act cannot be ratified j contracts to take in cargo for k at a foreign port j's government afterwards declares war against the country in which the port is situated and therefore the contract cannot be fulfilled he wants to file a suit cannot file a suit against j why because the contract is void because of supervening impossibility is discharged an anticipatory breach of contract an anticipatory breach of contract is a breach of contract occurring we have already done this a who owns two car is selling red car to b b thinks he is purchasing the black car no consensus ad idem void so are they valid agreements no a threatened to shoot b if b does not lend him 2 lakh and b agreed to do it is it valid no cohesion voidable He agrees to sell his house to be against hundred kgs of cocaine because the consideration is illegal. Boy, A asks B if he wants to buy his bike for fifty thousand. B agrees to buy. Valid. Mr X agrees to write a book with a publisher, but after few days he dies in an accident. Not valid. Why? Because supervening impossibility. Since its personal skill cannot be asked to perform by any other person, not even his legal heirs. Mr Rich aspired to get a self portrait made by an artist he went to the workshop of Mr C an artist uh of Mr C an artist and asked whether he could sketch the former's portrait an oil painting canvas Mr C agreed to offer and asked 50000 as full advance payment for the above creative work Mr C clarified that the painting shall be completed in 10 settings and shall take 3 months on reaching the workshop for the sixth setting Mr Rich was informed that Mr C became paralyzed and would not be able to paint for the near future Mr C had a son Mr K who was still pursuing his studies can mr rich ask in lieu uh, mr k to complete the work in lieu of his father no personal skill could mr rich ask mr k for the refund of the money yes restitution whenever a contract becomes 
void because of supervening impossibility. I can get back whatever I have paid. What is the law relating to de de determination of compensation? So basically rules, uh, any damage which arose naturally can be claimed as a matter of right. Special damages can be claimed only if mentioned. Remote damages can never be claimed and any damage under a policy contract can be claimed. Vindictive or exemplary damages, I hope you remember, are Queen Victoria. Uh, these damages are punitive in nature and hence awarded only in two cases. Harith, because death is something which is not in our hands, it's void. You cannot claim any damages. Vindictive or exemplary damages, uh, these basically are punitive in nature and hence are not awarded in all cases. They are only awarded in two cases. What? First, con breach of contract, uh, breach of contract of marriage and unlawful, uh, uh, sorry, wrongful dishonor of a customer's check. That is, he has bank still, he has balance in his bank still, his check is dishonored. Liquidated damage is a genuine free estimate of compensation for certain anticipated breach of contract, whereas penalty on the other hand is an extravagant amount stipulated and is clearly unconcisable and has no comparison to the loss suffered True, Parties calculate the probable damage that they will suffer liquidated. When they mention a very high amount which is nowhere near to the real damage suffered, it's a penalty. Mr. X and Mr. Y entered into a contract on 1st August. I will not go into the theory, I don't discuss too much of it in detail. By which Mr. X had to supply 50 tons of sugar to Mr. Y at a certain price strictly within a period of 10 days of the contract. Mr. Y also paid an amount of 50,000 towards advance. The mode of transport available between their places is roadway only. Severe flood came on 2nd August and the only road connecting their place was damaged. Can we say supervening impossibility? Yes. And could not be repaired. Within 15 days, Mr. X offered to supply sugar on 20th August for which Y did not agree. On 1st September, Mr. X claimed compensation of 10,000 for refusing to accept. Bro, you cannot claim. Okay, fine, not your fault, but even not the other person's fault. When he has strictly told he wanted it on this day, cannot do anything. Uh, on the other hand, uh, to accept, refusing to accept the supply of goods which was not there within the purview of the contract. Even if it was there, it is not justified. On what grounds you can claim? On the other hand, Mr. Y claimed the refund of the 50,000. Since here time was mentioned and it became supervening impossibility because the roads, roads were damaged. It is supervening impossibility. Can you claim the refund of the advance money? Yes. Restitution. Right. PM limited contracts with Gupta traders to make and deliver certain machinery to them by 30th June 2017 for 2150. Due to labor strike, PM limited could not could not manufacture and deliver the machinery to Gupta traders. Later, Gupta traders procured the machinery from another manufacturer for 22.75 lakh. Gupta traders was also prevented from performing a contract which, was, which it had made with Zenit traders at the time of their contract with PM Limited and were compelled to pay compensation for breach of contract. Calculate the amount of damage. They can claim 1.25. This they cannot claim because it was not mentioned in the contract. <laughs> Mr. Murari was traveling to Manali, was with his wife by bus of Himalaya Travels Private Limited. Due to some technical default, due to some technical default in the bus, the driver has to stop the bus in a mid in midway in cold night. Driver advised the passengers to get shelter in the nearest hotel, which was at a distance of only one kilometer from that place. Obviously, it's because of your technical fault in the bus, you have to, you are asking us to stay at a hotel, you have to pay for that. The wife of Mr. Mur Murthy caught cold and fell ill due to being asked to get down and she had to walk in cold night to reach the hotel. Mr. Murthy filed the suit against Himalaya Travels for damages for personal inconvenience, hotel charges and medical. This they can claim. Medical treatment of wife is a remote damage. As a bhai claim karlo na. This you cannot claim. Seema was running a boutique in New Delhi. She had to deliver some clothes to her friend Kiran who was putting up an exhibition at Mumbai. Seema delivered the sewing machine and some cloth to a railway company to be delivered at a place where the exhibition was to be held. Seema expected to earn an exceptional profit from the sales made at this exhibition. However, she did not bring this fact to the notice of the railway authorities. Can she claim any damage? No. On account, the goods were delivered 
at the place after the conclusion of the exhibition on account of such breach can seema recover the loss absolutely no x entered into a contract with y to supply him water bottles at rupees 5 Thereafter, X contracts with Z for the purchase of bottle at four point five, and he told Z that he did so to perform the contract entered with Y. Z failed to do so, and the market price went to five point two five. When he told him that I am going to sell it to Y, right? His damage is how much? Five minus four point five, which is point five zero. He can only claim point five zero. What would be your answer if Z had not informed about Y? If Z had not informed about Y, contract price, market price, four point five zero less five point two five. We can claim point seven five. This we are done in the class also. I can see the Josh going down. Huh? Tired all of you. A coolie in a uniform picks up the luggage of R to be carried out of the railway station without being asked by R, and R allows him to do so. Examine whether the coolie is entitled to receive a quasi-quasi contract when a person performs on behalf of another and the person enjoys the benefit, and the work was done non-gratuitously. Then he will get the money. Explain the meaning of quasi-contract. And what are the uh, state the circumstances under which they are identified? So basically, there are there is no contract, but a contract is created by the imposition of law. Uh, so shivering. Oh, it's so cold. It's not even cold here. Please, Bangalore. I don't think. Oh yes, last week I was in Bangalore. It was cold. Correct, correct, correct. So anyway, it's a contract uh, against. It is a contract against a single party and not the world at large. It is imposed by law and. the right is as i said only against one party and not the whole world and generally this right is for money so what are the different types of quasi contract claim for necessary supply to a minor or to a lunatic's family then the next one was payment um, uh, payment made for another person work done non gratuitously a responsibility of the finder of the goods and uh, live um, you know goods delivered by mistake or under coercion uh, we have already done this a coolie we already did this obligation of finder of the lost goods so basically he has to find the owner and return the goods back to him uh, he must not lose the goods he must not mix the goods with his own goods you frolic you shouldn't you shouldn't then he, he must not mix the goods with his own goods trace the owner return the goods back to him he has a right to claim the remuneration i mean sorry claim the reward the right to claim the expenses that he has spent he can also sell the goods oh promote any time he can also sell the goods um if the goods are perishable or the owner is not found or the owner is found and he is not giving you the charges which is two thirds or more of the value of the goods a contracts with b for the supply of 10 tons of sugar but before the supply is affected the fire caught in the factory and everything was destroyed supervening impossibility Super winning impossible. Are you happy? You guys don't say thank you, thank you. It's okay. He left his carriage on D's premises. Now what happened? T le P left his uh, carriage on D's premises. Landlord of D seized the carriage against the rent due from D. P paid the rent and got the carriage. Can P recover the amount from D? Yes. Payment made for a third person. When a person makes the payment on behalf of another to protect his interest, he can recover the money from that other person. X found a wallet in a restaurant. He inquired of all the customers. present there but the true owner could not be found he handed over the same to the manager of the restaurant to keep till the true owner is found after a week he went back to the restaurant to inquire about the wallet the manager refused to return it back to x saying that it did not belong to him in the light of the indian contract act can x recover it from the manager yes the finder has the right of ownership over the goods against the whole world except the owner 
so he can mr y aged 21 years lost his mental balance after the death of his parents in an accident he was left with his grandmother aged 85 years incapable of walking and dependent upon him mr m their neighbor out of pity started supplying food and other necessaries to both of them mr y and his grandmother used to live in the house built by his parents mr m also provided uh, grandmother some financial assistance for his uh, for her emergency medical treatment after supplying necessaries to mr y for 4 years mr m approached the former asking him to pay back 15 lakh inclusive of 7 lakh incurred for the medical treatment of the lady mr y pleaded that he got his uh, he has got his parents jewelry to sell a maximum value of 4 lakh which may be adjusted against the due mr m refuses refused and threatened mr y of legal suit first of all when a person supplies necessaries to a minor or to a lunatic's family when i say family family means dependent and we can very well say that the grandmother was dependent on him right then the person who has supplied necessaries under a under quasi contract he will be reimbursed from their property now the 4 lakh jewelry is there that's obviously not sufficient for the 15 lakh and can he claim the money for the medical treatment of the grandmother yes because it's not his obligation to do so so can he claim that yes so 4 lakh can be claimed but we only 4 lakh whereas the money spent was 15 lakh so here but they say that he was they lived in a house built by his parents so obviously he has inherited that property so he will have a right to recover that money PQR a hospital in Delhi recruits Mr Dr A on contract basis for a period of 3 months the hospital management promises to pay D a lump sum amount of 1 lakh if D sorry if A test positive <coughs> for novel corona virus during the contract period of 3 months identify the type of contract obviously it's a contingent contract what is the rules of happen, uh, enforcement dependent on the happening of an event is valid when the event happens and becomes void when the event does not happen contingent contract to do or not to do something on the happening or non happening of a future uncertain event so what are the essentials of a contingent contract dependent on a future uncertain event the event may must be a is a collateral event and it can never depend on the will of the promisor what is the rules of enforceability dependent on the happening of an event is valid when the event happens becomes void when the event does not happen depends depending on the non in, on happening of the event is valid when the event does not happen becomes void when the event happens or does not become impossible dependent on third party is valid if the third party acts accordingly is void if the third party does not act accordingly and if it is dependent on an impossible event obviously it is void at initio hello with this we are done i just couldn't cover up the partnership scanner with you all the rest everything we have covered up right and uh, you know you know everything so don't be scared all the best write the exam properly Thank you. I'll see you again very soon. Bye 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 bye. But not as foundation students. Bye bye.